Hello there. Welcome to my show, COVID-19 Update by Virat for August 26, 2020. Uh, it's my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Vicky. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I have two little sisters whom I love. And Vicky is the older one, social worker slash, um, you know, uh, I guess college administrator. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you know, congratulations to all the students who, uh, who get help from her in a college in Delaware. Yeah, I mean, uh, Delaware's a small state. Everybody knows everybody. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my, both my sisters are there. My mom and my dad are there. And my sister's husband uh, grew up in Delaware. So, yeah, <laughs> it's like, Korean community is small there. Uh, my dad works closely with all the Korean pastors in Delaware. And there's like, what, several thousand Koreans in Delaware. They all know each other, <laughs> you know? Yeah, Koreans connect all over America, all over the world, but especially within a state. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so happy birthday, my sister, Vicky. Happy birthday. Yeah, it's a joyful occasion, but she just, Got her doctorate yesterday. So it's like two days of celebration. Doctorate yesterday, birthday today. Customized insurance. You got to see to believe that. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like customized insurance, your degree. <laughs> um, and it gives you liberty. You know, my sister's, um, she's worked hard. You know, when you think about uh, what she's achieved, it's pretty incredible. You know, she, um, you know, she, um, yeah, she's, you know, a life, lifelong learner. She has a master's in social work from Columbia University, which is an Ivy League university. And um, she has a, uh, uh, you know, doctorate now. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, she's uh, very talented, very smart, very qualified at what she does. Um, yeah, so she's been advising and, and guiding college students for a long time. Um, yeah, she's very good at it. So uh, yeah, she's like indispensable in her college. So yeah, it's a good thing to be indispensable. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hopefully she gets promoted to like president. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, today, you know, uh, also we have uh, 1,231 deaths. So uh, two days in a row, it's about the same number, give and take few. Um, yeah, so the total death rate in America stands at uh, 179,708. Um, yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, it's, death rate is rising at 1,000 every day. I went to, uh, you know, grocery shopping today at Giant. Um, they really have great fried chicken. <laughs> it's like, it's it's pretty cheap and it's very good. So, um, yeah, Giant has become my my uh, uh, primary choice for buying fried chicken. <laughs> you know, I used to be a big Popeyes fan, but uh, yeah, I mean, when you do price compare, it's such a big difference. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, Popeye's is pretty good, you know, but um, yeah, you know, I, Giants is very good too, so I, you know, I can't complain, <laughs> you know. I get like different sauces uh, from Giant and try them out with the, their chicken. It's pretty good, you know. It's like ready-made fried chicken. It's really good. So if you, um, you know, if you like to, uh, to save time on making food, you know, go to Giant and buy like several of these ready-made chicken. You know, you have a meal for the whole family. And it's pretty cheap. And you can save a lot of money. And you may have to save money because you may become unemployed. You may be laid off from your job because COVID-19 isn't going away. Um, yeah, in fact, it's getting worse. And flu season is coming in like a few weeks. So you probably need your you know, savings to survive. You know, I don't know how much you've saved up. 
uh, in your bank account how much you have in cash. But yeah, I mean, you know, you got to count on your children not becoming employed. A lot of uh, class of 2020 are unemployed. A lot of class of 2021 next year graduates, students who graduate in May next year will be unemployed. Yeah, we don't know when COVID-19 will be over. Uh, World Health Organization expects it to continue forever. I think, you know, most health experts are realizing that this is forever. It's kind of like HIV or hepatitis C virus, which is a 365 days per year virus. Ever since they were discovered, it's always been in existence and it's existing now. It's infecting hundreds of thousands every year, killing many every year. So, you know, this is just a more horrible version of that. Uh, so many scientists are coming to accept that COVID-19 may be permanent, like forever. Um, we'll see, you know, if we're still talking, you know, 20 years from now about COVID-19, that obviously it is permanent, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but definitely we're going to have this for foreseeable future. Um, yeah, so and this year we didn't have a graduation. I had an online graduation at Georgetown University. As you know, I graduated from Clinical Nurse Leader Program from the School of Nursing and Health Studies at Georgetown University. Um, yeah, there are 25 of us uh, in Clinical Nurse Leader Program, cohort 2020, who graduated in August. Our precise graduation date was August 24, 2020. Uh, that's certified in our transcripts. We have our final transcript out, so it's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, like there are people in our program scrounging to like get their uh, applications into, uh, you know, Board of Nursing. You know, I, I applied in June, you know. Come on, you know, early warm gets, gets the, what is it, early bird gets the warm, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's why I got hired the Virginia, Virginia Hospital Center because I applied, you know, early, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, yeah, but all of us had to take um, uh, the exam, uh, which is NCLEX RN. So basically, our program is a master's program, and everybody applies with a bachelor's in something other than nursing. So none of us had a nursing education. Uh, a nursing degree before coming to Georgetown. Um, so, uh, you know, we got this degree for master's, two-year master's program in clinical nurse leader, and that allows us to take NCLEX RN exam, which, you know, would allow us to become RN nurses. And also, because it's a master's degree, it trained us to be nurse leaders, kind of like an MBA, you know? Uh, you don't really need an ex any experience to get an MBA. Some schools require experience, but you get MBA without any work experience, you just out of bachelor's, and they could go straight into middle management. Um, so, you know, uh, we got trained in uh, uh, nurse management or nurse leadership. So it's kind of like an MBA equivalent for nurses. Um, yeah, so, you know, I took my certification exam for that, clinical nurse leader, and I passed. So, you know, <laughs> I'm waiting for my certificate to arrive. Um, yeah, so it's, a, you know, it's a exciting time for all of us. You know, uh, we get national certification as clinical nurse leader, which is a very big deal, obviously. And then we'll take our RN exam and pass, you know. So all 20 of us are kind of starting hard for that exam. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, so wish all of us, you know, good providence <laughs> or good luck. Um, yeah, I've been working hard this, this evening. I love to see like, you know, GOP convention stuff, but hey, you know, priorities, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, we got done with a two year, very intensive program. We have this very difficult exam coming up, NCLEX RN. Uh, it's like culmination of all of our study for two years. So that has to be my priority right now. And I'm not running as a Republican, I'm running as an independent. So 
if I were running as Republican, I'd probably be there in Charlotte right now. But I'm not running as a Republican. I'm running as an independent. And after this video finishes, you could click on the video on the top left-hand corner and see why I decided to run as an independent. So I switched over in February of, two th well, actually in March. Uh, so I ran as a Republican for Republican convention. We didn't have a primary uh, from um, November 2019 to February 2020. Uh, and then starting March, I read, started running as an independent. Um, yeah, so um, that's what happened. When I was running for Republican convention, we didn't really need to um, collect any signatures because it was a convention, it wasn't a primary. So I was kind of focused on winning my uh, convention delegate votes, delegates vote, delegates from Arlington County GOP, Alexandria GOP, Falls Church GOP, and Fairfax County GOP. And you know, I, I, I was confident I was gonna win, but you know, um, yeah, you know, uh, God had other ideas, I guess. You know, just watch the video at the end, you know, at the top left-hand uh, corner, click on it and watch the video. It's a very, very short video. And then you'll see why I, I decided to run as an independent. You know, God works in mysterious ways. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, I follow the guidance of the Lord, you know. God's hand is operating in history. Can I get a five on God's hand operating in history? Yeah. So um, I follow the direction of the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Clinic and Nurse Leaders with 25 of us, we're taking NCLEX RN. CNL, CNL, 2020, CNL, 2020, Georgetown. Yay. We'll be taking our NCLEX RN exam. Yay. So, so we're all excited, but we're all studying really, really hard. So it's harder than finals exam. So it's like, geez, it's like we graduated from Georgetown, but we still have like this incredibly hard exam to take. Virginia Hospital Center paid for my course. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I, you know, I've been doing problems in the course. They have like over two thousand you know, NCLEX questions, and, you know, they had a course. Uh, I already finished the course, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was nice of Virginia Hospital Center to pay for my uh, NCLEX RN prep course. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I now belong to uh, Virginia Hospital Center uh, family, so they, they take care of me, you know, what can I say? <laughs> um, yeah, but, um, Yes, I'm, you know, I'm excited, you know, I, you know, on the, on the prep course, I got like 92.5%. So, I mean, it's looking good, but I mean, I, uh, I rather overstudy than understudy, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm just working really, really hard, you know? Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good good to be belonging to a family, you know. I, I'm now part of Virginia Hospital Center family. My mom texted me today and my dad texted me today and they're like, we're, we're praying for your NCLEX RN exam, you know. So they're rooting for me, they're praying for me. Uh, my, my mom texts in Korean. It's kind of cool how you could text in Korean. I never really tried it, <laughs> you know, but my, my mom texts me in Korean, so. Uh, it's good. You know, I'm fluent in Korean, obviously. I came to America when I was in elementary, when my parents uh, came, immigrated to America because my dad had a call to be a senior pastor of a Korean Presbyterian church in Philadelphia. Uh, and then I went to Film on Christian Academy, which is in Erdenheim, Pennsylvania. All three of us, me and my younger sisters, all of us went there. Um, yeah, we all loved it. You know, it's great teachers and great, great people. You know, uh, I always enjoy going back for reunions, you know, and meeting the teachers again or, you know, fellow students, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> life flies by, doesn't it? Does it feel like you were just like in high school yesterday? 
when we some of you might have been in high school yesterday. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> some of my viewers, I have Generation Z viewers. So, uh, yeah, although I recommend, what, you know, people over 18 watch this show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of Generation Z followers, you know, people kind of who see, see me as a role model, see me as a hero. You know, I have a lot of Generation Z, you know. I mean, I, I'm, you know, in many ways I'm transcendent. I transcend generations. So it has always been when I, you know, go wherever I go, you know, Israel, Germany, France, United Kingdom, America, you know, I've always had a, a lot of people, a lot of following, you know, especially from the younger generation, you know, like, you know, Generation Z right now, year 2021, a lot of Generation Z follow me, you know, they, uh, they like me, they see me as a hero or a role model, a lot of them want to be like me, they take my advice, maybe more so than baby boomers do, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I am well liked by every generation, but I think the younger generation likes me the best, you know, I, I don't know, maybe well, every generation likes me in different ways, but I know that a lot of younger generation individuals try to like you know follow my guidance and plan their life accordingly so um, i'm doing a lot of uh, good social service and you know uh uh i'm working hard to make the world a better place so i'm happy to be playing a role of a leader for generation z to define america's future for the next 30 to 50 years maybe longer you know, so I'm happy to do that. The Generation Z gen population right now will become leaders in like 20, 20 years or so, some of them sooner than that. Um, you know, America can become completely different in 20 years, you know what I'm saying? Uh, things can change drastically from generation to generation. So I'm happy that, you know, I have a strong influence on Generation Z. Uh, the youngest generation right now in America. A lot of people uh, kind of looking up to me and following me. I'm happy to see that. Because um, I am worthy of uh, emulation and respect. Um, you know, I'm trying to bring, back, bring America back to God uh, in order to make your life better and your children's life better. Your children, will, you know, they're in Generation Z, right? Uh, some are older Generation Z in their 18, 19, 20s. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, I'm transcendent, you know, generation-wise. Um, yeah, Generation Z love me. So um, yeah, so I, I see a future in America that becomes like the America that I want to create. You know, I want to bring America back to God. And I am confident Generation Z would deliver deliver what I want, <laughs> you know? I'm very confident of that. Um, yeah, I'm here at Christian Kim, independent candidate for US Congress in Virginia's 8th District, Arlington, Alexandria, Falls Church, and Fairfax County. I assure you, Generation Z in Arlington, Alexandria, Falls Church, and Fairfax County are headed in the direction where I'm leading them. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes you, me an expert of education. That's what makes me an expert of uh, youth. You know, I'm an expert of youth, what can I say? Um, I mean, you know, I am a teacher. So I taught uh, eighth grade uh, math at Peabody Middle School, which is currently Vernon Johns Middle School and St. Petersburg City Public Schools. Um, yeah, I loved all my students, obviously. You know, they're, I tried to help them go in the right direction. You know, kids are kids, you know, whether they're in suburbs or in the city, they're kids, you know? You just have to be able to kind of guide them in the right direction. And I'm very good at that. Um, and so, um, you know, and, and you know, I, obviously I, I've been an elementary school teacher at Savoy Elementary School, which is a elementary school, 100% African-American in pop, student population. And it's in Anacostia neighborhood, Ward 8, uh, Green Line in DC. Um, yeah, Green Line meaning Subway. Uh, and, uh, you know, the kids love me. They follow me, you know. Um, yeah, I, I know how to speak to kids. I understand kids. 
I know how to talk to them. I know how to direct them in the right direction that they need to go. I'm, I'm a very good educator. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised that kids want to follow me and do what I tell them to do, <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm very good at that. Uh, wherever I go, you know, wherever I've taught, kids love me. So, I mean, there's no surprise there. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, what can I say? I'm an excellent educator. Uh, you know, excellent educator is not just about theories, right? It's actually being able to teach the children what they need to learn. Uh, and I'm very good at that. <laughs> so, yeah. And I am confident that Generation Z will deliver to me what I want from them. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm 100% sure they will. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm also a historian. So I have the expertise of looking at history through the eyes of historian. Uh, and, you know, history is pendulum shift. It goes from right to left, right to left. Yeah, we're swinging right right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about all populations, Black, Hispanic, Asian, white, uh, Native American, it doesn't matter what, what the population is. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm excited about what's going on, or the direction we're going as a country. I think we're going in the right direction. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so vote for me uh, on November 3rd, 2020. Uh, I'm independent candidate for U.S. Congress of Virginia's 8th District. Hirak Christian Kim is my name. Um, yeah, and I'll bring America into the promised land. Yeah, you need Hirak Christian Kim to bring America into the promised land. Can I get a five on the promised land? Promised land? I mean, doesn't it sound good? Land that has been promised? Um, yeah, I mean, there are photos here of uh, UCLA swim team right below me. I tell you, I'm glad I went to UCLA for my, my uh, history PhD. There are so many attractive women there. Look at all, every night after night I have photos and primarily it's like UCLA people, you know? You know, I guess they don't say California girls are beautiful for nothing, right? So these are UCLA swimmers uh, and uh, I don't know what possessed them to stand outside in, in the snow or, in winter, but I guess, you know, they're competing, you know, at a state where it's snowing. So <laughs> but it's a pretty crazy thing to do, but you know, hey, you know, uh, to be young and idealistic, hey, that's what's gonna change America. America back to God. Can I get a five on America back to God? Yeah. Um, next to that, uh, we have uh, Georgetown swimmers. Um, you know, and next to that is Carrie Bonfield. You know, I should tell you a story of Carrie Bonfield. Isn't she beautiful? She's the most beautiful swimmer that I've seen in my life, like in person, like person to person. She is like so fit. I mean, she has like, a, you know, really, she's beautiful and she has really nice body. Uh, and she's, she's a smart person. And I met her, um, I just tell you my story about Carrie. Carrie Bonfield is from New Jersey. Uh, and I, I was walking down Georgetown University. And, uh, you know, there's a place called Red Square. Red Square is basically right in front of a, um, Intercultural Center, which is called ICC. That's the building where Walsh School of Foreign Services. And as you know, uh, I... I uh, am the president of Georgetown Collaborative Diplomacy Initiative uh, for, uh, for academic year 2019 to 2020. Um, and so, you know, I walk by there all the time, but, uh, you know, it was a while ago, like three years ago, uh, uh, that I was walking around Georgetown. I got accepted to Georgetown and, and um, you know, I, I saw this beautiful woman. I didn't know she was a swimmer then. But I walked up and we started talking and she was telling me she's a swimmer and and she had this group called, uh, you know, uh, it's like a ocean group. Um, and she's the president. And so she had this table set up for that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the ocean. I march for the ocean, I love the ocean. So, um, so I asked her if I could join her group. 
And then I uh, applied to be vice president. So I got chosen to be vice president. So she was the president and I was vice president. So we, we tabled uh, at the Red Square together and we collected like over, uh, like over 100 signatures in one day. Yeah. <laughs> so she and I, we're a really good team, you know. Uh, so, you know, we had a, you know, a nice, nice time kind of collecting signatures introducing people to the needs of the ocean. Uh, you know, I'm really good with people. Generally, I, you know, I'm good at like getting people involved in things. Uh, that's why I was the vice president of uh, Georgetown University Graduate Student Government, GradGov, from May 2019 to May 2020. And I was a darn good vice president of Graduate Student Government. I, I was instrumental in informing the Senate graduate student government senate. Um, yeah, I played a serious look. I contacted all the director of studies of every single school, business school, um, the court school, law school, foreign service, nursing school, graduate school, everywhere. You know, I contacted all the directors of programs. Uh, yeah, I've done all the work to get the graduate student government senate formed. Yeah, I was darn good. I've done so much good for graduate student, uh, graduate students at Georgetown, over 9,000 of them. Yeah, they're so blessed to have me, you know, as their vice president. I, I know they, they, are, they know that. So um, I have a lot of fans at Georgetown among graduate students, uh, you know, who, who looked up to me as, a vice, as their vice president. I've done a lot of good for them. Every time they come to graduate student government events, I'm their welcoming them and making them happy and making them feel welcome. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to have been a sunshine in their life, bringing joy to graduate students, 9,000 graduate students at Georgetown. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's good to do a lot of good things for, uh, you know, uh, graduate students at Georgetown. Many of whom are gonna go on to government sector, business sector, you know, to do a lot of good things, you know, hopefully. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's good to be leader of leaders, you know. That's what I am, what can I say? I'm here at Christian Kim Independent Gallery for U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District. Um, and uh, yeah, I started running uh, for Virginia's 8th District in November, you know. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy to to be running and, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a uh, Congressman, a lot of Georgetown students live in Arlington. So I expect all of you to vote for me, okay? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, um, I, I believe I'm better than Don Byer as a candidate for US Congress of Virginia's 8th District. He, he actually is currently a Congressman, Don Byer. Uh, but, you know, I, I believe I can do a much better job than he can. So that's why I'm asking you to vote for me. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm expecting to win in November, on November 3rd, 2020. Yeah, so vote, vote for me. Um, so, um, yeah, Carrie Bonfield, so I start talking with her and, you know, she's, you know, she's really pretty, right? Uh, she, she's actually really that pretty in person. I think she's prettier in person because I was just walking and I, I just could not, but stop, <laughs> she was pretty. I just wanted to talk to her. So I, I started talking to her and uh, yeah, she was really nice, you know. But anyway, uh, yeah, she graduated in 2019, um, you know, and left. Yeah, you know, people move on, you know. And she's from New Jersey. I lived in New Jersey for a while. And I lived in Elizabeth. I, I lived in uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey, which is Union County. Uh, and I also lived in uh, Bergen County, you know, so, uh, and you know, uh, and I lived in Jersey City, you know, um, yeah, so I know New Jersey quite well. I was a member of the Alumni Association of, of New Jersey, uh, went to many of their events. I interviewed high school students in New Jersey, who applied to University of Pennsylvania. I think I interviewed some students from her school too, Carrie Bonfield School. Yeah, I never a lot of New Jersey students of a lot of different New Jersey high schools who applied to the University of Pennsylvania. So, uh, 
yeah, you know, it's always nice, you know, like interviewing students and seeing which students are good enough to get into the University of Pennsylvania. And, you know, I have my own portal, my account, where I submit my evaluations at the University of Pennsylvania. So, um, yeah, I'm, you know, excited, you know, it's kind of a fun thing that I do, you know, helping the University of Pennsylvania is a, it's a good thing, you know, it's my alma mater where I did my bachelor's. Um, yeah, and you see next to Carrie Bonfield, um, March for the Ocean, uh, uh, the <laughs> March for the Ocean symbol. Yeah, that's my, uh, I'm wearing that shirt. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I, I actually ate with the swim team, <laughs> you know, Georgetown University swim team. I had, like, I joined them for dinner once, you know, uh, at Leo. <laughs> we had a good time just talking and getting to know each other. You know, I'm a very people person, so it was fun, you know. They're really nice. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, let's look at top five in Latin America. Number one is Brazil. Uh, and they have 3,717,000. 156 cases, 3% death rate. So you have 117,665 deaths. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh, you know, it's pretty bad. I mean, they're very close to us. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, they keep dying in Brazil, sad. Uh, my cousin is a, a I have cousins in Brazil who are like all millionaires. Um, and, you know, um, one of my cousins went to UCLA and played golf for their varsity team. And his sister married, uh, I guess, his, his friend from Stanford, from Stanford University uh, varsity golf team. I think they're planning to go pro. I mean, that's their plan, I think, you know. I don't know if they maybe already have gone pro. I don't follow golf. I'm not really a golf kind of person, but uh, yeah, I, I know like they, they were, they're really good. I mean, they've obviously they're playing in the varsity team, uh, you know, they, you know, for the compete against each other, UCLA and Stanford, and, you know, I think they're a pretty good golf team, don't they? Uh, but anyway, um, yes, I have cousins in Brazil, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I worry, you know, there's a large Korean community uh, in Brazil. Um, and Peru is number two, 607,382 cases. Uh, death rate is 5%. Um, you have 28,001 uh, person who have died uh, at Peru, like in Peru. Uh, so their death rate is rising pretty badly. It's like New York City. Mexico has 573,888 cases. And their um, death is at 62,076, 11% death rate. That's how much death we're going to have in... America, probably in every state during flu season, 60,000 per state, that would come up to 3 million deaths for America in flu season. Yeah, it's going to be bad in the flu season. I was talking to some people at Giant today, obviously six feet of distance, even with masks on, uh, about that. And they were really concerned, and I was giving them some advice, you know, what the cashier was asking me, you know, if it's going to be bad in winter. And I told him, yeah, it's going to be bad. And this was in Alexandria. Um, and I said, you know, he said, he said you know, uh, so he looked worried. And so I, I gave him guidance. I said, just make sure you social, you know, like you, you, you know, you kind of worry, you know, you just be careful, you know, like with your mask and social distancing and make sure when you go home, if you have people at home, you, as soon as you arrive at home, you know, you just wash, uh, you know, like put all your clothing in, 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 in like a washer, take a shower, uh, wear new clothing before you like greet them, you know. Uh, you just have to be very careful 
if you could take precautions, uh, it can help with uh, preventing infection spread, you know? Uh, because let's say, you know, uh, you've been dealing with customers all day if you're a cashier, you know, they could have like, you know, they could have stuff on your shirt or whatever, on your arm, uh, you know, I mean, invisible, you know, virus may be like laying on there, uh, like COVID-19, who knows, no one knows, right? But you go home and you take a shower, hot shower, and you uh, put your clothing in the washer, and it, everything's fine. Obviously, hopefully you're not infected inside it respiratorily. But, you know, if you manage well, you brush your teeth when you go home and do as much as you can, you minimize the possibility you're infected, right? Um, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, some people are still going to get it, but, you know, the more careful you are, I mean, he has to work, right? He has to eat, he has to pay his rent. So I'm not going to tell him not to work, uh, right? He's working as a cashier. Uh, and obviously, cashiers are needed for us to eat food. So, um, like, you know, I want teachers to work. I just don't want the teachers to teach in the classroom with students there, which jeopardizes their life or death, right? I mean, I would love to see 100% of the teachers work, but they should not jeopardize their life to be teaching children, right? Uh, that's why I'm asking, you know, school districts to uh, go 100% online. And I've been lobbying very hard for a long time. And I've been successful with Virginia's 8th district. Every public school district in Virginia's 8th district is going online. Because I've been kind of get, getting at them for like three months to go 100% online. So I'm glad uh, they listened after three months of advocating for my voters, you, you in Virginia's 8th district, uh, every single one of the four school districts, Arlington Public Schools, Alexandria City Public Schools, Falls Street Public Schools, Fairfax County Public Schools, all four of them went online. So I, I feel a sense of accomplishment in protecting your life, your children's lives, uh, because you know, your children don't have to go to class to get infected and die also. If your children get COVID, they could kill you because they could infect you. So I feel like I saved your children's life and your life as well. So uh, yeah, I feel a sense of deep accomplishment uh, because as you know, New York Public Schools is opening. You know how many people are gonna die in New York this winter? It's, it's horrific number of people are gonna die in New York. I don't even wanna, oh my gosh, I don't, I mean, I, it's gonna be horrible. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, maybe I should talk about it a little bit. I, I'm, I'm predicting that uh, New York will have far more death in this flu season than in the previous season. Like, yeah, I'm predicting that New York State can have uh, like million death. Million death. It's a big state. New York is very crowded. There's like 10 million people in the city. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of people dying in the winter. Because um, New York only had like, what, one month of death earlier, you know, like April, you know, a little bit over a month. But um, yeah, they're going to have full six months of flu season. So yeah, beginning to end, prelude to conclusion. So um, yeah, a lot of people are dying in New York. So I hate to be in New York City. That's like, New York City is a city of death. Uh, watch, you know, you'll see what I mean when, when winter comes. Yeah, <laughs> if you're in New York City, you probably have one out of 10 chance of dying. <laughs> you know, my gosh, I'm, thank God I'm not in New York anymore. You know, I had a business in New York. So uh, a learning center, very successful learning center. But uh, I'm glad I'm not in New York. <laughs> That's an incubation for death from COVID-19 flu season. Um, yeah. Um, Colombia is number four, 572,243 cases. Uh, and the death rate is um, 18,184, uh, or number is 
1,184. The rate is 3%. Chile has 402,365 cases. Their death rate is also 3%, and they have 10,990 deaths so far. Um, disturbing thing is happening is a lot of students in college campuses are getting infected with COVID-19 uh, everywhere in America. Like every college that's open, you have like, like cases of COVID-19. Uh, this is very bad going into the flu season. This is middle of August, you know, uh, when people's immune systems are strongest. But people's immune system break down during winter, become weak during winter. So the same people who got COVID in August may survive. Uh, but the same person who gets COVID, same exact COVID in December probably will not. Yeah, so, so, so uh, yeah, so that's, um, uh, just thinking about it, you know, it gives me chills, you know? Um, but that's true though. Your immune system is strongest in the summer. Um, even the weather cooperates, you know? Uh, but in the winter, the weather is cold. Your immune system is down. You get COVID, you could die. Yeah. Harry the Owl is worried. Yeah, I mean, he should be worried because a lot of, lot of uh, Americans are gonna die in the winter when the immune system is weak. Even college students can die. You will see a lot of college students dying. I mean, even now there are younger people dying. Um, and this is summer. Yeah, in flu season during winter, everybody's immune system is down. So you get the same exact COVID, uh, but when you get it, it makes a difference. Uh, obviously, even if you got it in August, you could get it again, like in December or January. Uh, you get it several times during the year. Uh, yeah, just having COVID once does not protect you from getting COVID again. Dr. Fauci has talked about that. World Health Organization has talked about that. It's, yeah, you're not, you can get COVID, you're still gonna get it again. And the second time or third time you get it, you could die. Um, yeah, it's a scary thing. Um, yeah, so let's go to, um, CPAC, yeah. <laughs> I have some more photos from CPEC. I even got my ID card from CPEC there for you to see. Yeah, here are Christian Kim for U.S. Congress, uh, Virginia State District, right? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I'm known as the Virginia 8th District guy at CPEC. Uh, <laughs> you know? I mean, geez, they, they made me an ID card. You know, here are Christian Kim for U.S. Congress of Virginia State District, right? Yeah, that's who I am. So what can I say? Um, <laughs> that's how I'm known among the conservatives uh, throughout America. Conservative media people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm. I am here at Christian Kim. Uh, independent. Well, they didn't know I was independent. At least in February, I was still running as a Republican. You know. I switched over in March, but they know that I'm a candidate here at Christian Kim for U.S. Congress of Regions 8th District, and I'm conservative. They know that. Um, so everybody knows me as the here at Christian Kim for U.S. Congress of Regions 8th District guy. Yeah, as my ID says. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I made a lot of friends. So today I'm sharing photos uh, with you. Uh, people, uh, you know, you know that friends I made who are like, you know, uh, businessmen, political pundits, people who had their tables set up. Um, I made a lot of friends, which was good, you know. Uh, so there was a Trump, the Trump Tower lady there. She's actually a U.S. Congress candidate in the state of Delaware. Isn't she pretty? 
<laughs> you know, we really look good together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, she actually looked like Nila, Nila Whitico. Uh, she's uh, from Minnesota. She's in our cohort, Clinical Nurse Leader 2020. Uh, yeah, they kind of look alike. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, you know, but this lady, the Trump Tao lady, she's from Delaware. She's a US Congress uh, candidate in Delaware for the Republican Party. Uh, so we had a lot of fun talking and sharing and discussing. We do look good together, right? <laughs> you know, maybe I should pay her a visit in Delaware, um, <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, we do look good together, you know? Oh, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, she would probably look really nice in a wedding gown. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I do look good with blondes, you know? Um, yeah, next to that are a bunch of high school students who are uh, Republicans. Uh, and they are young conservatives, you know? And mo they're mostly seniors heading to college. Uh, and as I said, you know, I have a universal appeal. I have high appeal among Generation Z. They love me. Uh, it was nice to talk to them, catch up, hear their concerns, you know. Um, you know, I encourage them. I encourage them to run for office and remain conservative. You know, as you know, I'm here at Christian Kim. Um, independent candidate for U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District, and my motto is to bring America back to God. And, you know, a lot of uh, America's high school students who are, you know, Republicans or conservative, um, they believe that that's an important thing. I mean, to be honest with you, I met a lot of Democrats who believe that, you know, bringing America back to God is important, you know, like among Generation Z, you know. And so I don't think I have any problem bringing America back to God. Um, if you vote for me for U.S. Congress of Virginia's 8th District, because I would say, you know, Generation Z are strongly on my side. Uh, Generation Z, you know, children of Republicans, Democrats, and independents, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe they are our future, you know, in that regard. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to, to guide them along in the path of righteousness. Um, yeah, underneath that, uh, there is the organization Walk Away. There are a group of Democrats who walked away from the Democratic Party uh, to become conservative. Um, yeah, so there are people like that. You know, that's happening all over America, you know, walking away from the Democratic Party to become conservative. And then next to that, uh, I you know, took a photo with a couple of people who are uh, authors. Uh, and we had some interesting talks about books and writing. As you know, I'm a published author as well. And next to that are two people who represent pharmacy group. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I took pharmacology uh, in my CNL 2020 cohort program, master's of science and clinical nurse leader at Georgetown University. And pharmacology is one of the hardest courses, pathophysiology and pharmacology. So all 20 of us, well, actually there was more than 25 of us because we started out with 34 and a lot dropped out. Nine dropped out, the final product was 25. So several people dropped out after the pharmacology course. <laughs> you know, that was hard course, you know? Geez, I got like no sleep. Always studying for the pharmacology class. And I had like a, what? I had a clinical in a hospital. So I was like working in a hospital. Uh, and then I went and had to take an exam. I mean, geez, like for clinical, we had to wake up like early, early, early in the morning because it starts at like 6.45 a.m. So I'm up like by 4.30. And then we have a, a like a, midterm exam, you know, after like a whole day's work in a hospital. So that was, that was hard, you know, but uh, hey, I survived, I'm here, I got 
my master of science and clinical nurse leader awarded on, like, along with my fellow core members on August 24th, 2020. That's what the transcript says. So uh, yeah, all of us are very proud of that. Um, yeah, so, um, <laughs> but pharmacology, wow, it was a nightmare. But the professor was really nice, you know, Nancy, Professor Nancy Gentry. Uh, professor Nancy Gentry uh, is very talented. She's very caring. Um, you know, I, I visit her office and we, we chatted several times. Uh, and she was really, really encouraging and nice. So uh, she's a wonderful woman. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, a um, lot of nursing professors are really, really nice. So <laughs> I love all the nursing professors at Georgetown. They're all really nice. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, CN CNL, CNL 2020, CNL 2020, Georgetown University. Yay! Our graduation was certified on August 24th, 2020. Yay! <laughs> yeah. And now we have to study for NCLEX RN exam. <laughs> All of us are like studying like men, men. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah. Um, so at, at, next to that, we have um, the MAGA, a Make America Great Again MAGA. MAGA. You know, they're big President Trump fans. <laughs> so they were like selling a lot of President Trump stuff, you know. You know, we, we chatted, uh, you know, a lot of fun. And they're really ni nice and interesting people at CPAC. So I really love spending time chatting with them, getting to know them, befriending them, you know. I love doing that kind of stuff. Uh, next to that, we have the Korean CPAC. I'm Korean. And obviously, you know, I'm going to stop by the Korean table. My people, right, ethnically, you know, racially. So we had like a lot of fun talking about CPEC in Korea, Korean Conservative Political Action Committee. Yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. Um, yeah. Um, and um, right about the mega photo, there's an author with his mother. I like that guy because he brought his mother, you see his mother right there, uh, to CPAC. And his mother was really like proud of him and, and he was like kind of sharing what he wrote. And it was interesting stuff, you know, I, I was happy to talk to him and his mother. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's like really interesting people at CPAC. And above that, uh, oh yeah, you have uh, the anti-abortion people, like it's a newly, form anti-abortion group, Let Them Live. Uh, so I was talking with the founders and uh, yeah, I, you know, I got a shirt. You see me holding my shirt. Um, yeah, it was good, you know, I, you know I'm anti-abortion obviously. So, uh, you know, I was excited that there are all these new groups popping up. I'm sure Generation Z will create new and new groups and uh, bring ingenuity, you know, to it to like anti-abortion movement. So it's very exciting, you know? Uh, next to that, um, oh, it's a, you see the little baby? They're an uh, Orthodox Jewish couple, I think from, um, I forgot which state, but they're publishers. So, you know, I'm an author, so uh, I was talking to them about maybe getting some of my stuff on Jewish history published. Uh, and you know, they're, they're like religious Orthodox Jewish people. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we, you know, I talked to them about, uh, uh, about my experience in Israel. I lived in Israel for over three years and I'm an expert of Jewish studies. Uh, so, you know, I, you know, so we, we had a lot of fun stuff that we talked about. So that was good. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, interesting people, you know, CPAC. You know, uh, <laughs> so I made a lot of new conservative BFFs. I'm looking forward to seeing all of them in the next CPAC. You know, I might have seen some of them, you know, had I, you know, if I were a Republican, I probably would have gone down to Charlotte, maybe I'd have seen some of them again. But eh, you know, what can you do? Especially the beautiful, the Trump Tower lady, <laughs> woman, gal, who's running for US Congress in uh, Delaware. 
I would have loved to have seen her again, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you know how it is. I'm single, I'm not married. Uh, I've never been married, I don't have any children. So, um, you know, I'm hoping God will send me a good Christian woman. Uh, my priority is that she's a good Christian woman, obviously that's number one, that's a given. But after that, obviously the most important thing is how beautiful she is and how beautiful her body is. That's the most important thing. Because you could always get degrees after you're married. You could always, you know, become smarter through book learning or whatever. I mean, you know, anything you can achieve before marriage, you could achieve after marriage. So uh, for me, the most important thing is, you know, physical beauty, <laughs> you know? And obviously, you know, uh, when you're 18 to 24, you, you look beautiful, you know? Um, especially if you lose weight. Losing weight is like 50% of the game, 50% of the battle. Um, I mean, don't like do anything crazy like bulimia or anorexia. You know, don't throw up after you eat. That destroys your, your system. Uh, don't starve yourself. That's just stupid. But I would encourage you, you know, eat three meals, but you know, just in moderation. Uh, you know, eat, you know, eat tofu which is, you know, kind of not fattening. A lot of Koreans eat tofu. There's a lot of good dishes made with tofu. Fish, it's not fattening, you know, like all kinds of fish, flounder, trout, you know, mackerel, tuna, but not from a can. You gotta eat it like fresh. Um, you know, you bake it or you, you know, obviously, you know, baking it is better than using oil, like frying it. Um, you could steam it. You could steam it with vegetables. Obviously, that's very healthy. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, these things will not make you fat, right? You can still, you, you can keep very thin figure eating three meals a day. So that's what I would encourage you to do, to stay away from ice cream, cookies, uh, and cake, you know, like sweet things or pies. They're, that's what makes you fat, you know? Um, yeah, on a special occasion like birthday or Christmas or something, you could have one, you know. But, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you could wait until you're married, you know. <laughs> you got to keep your figure. That's kind of important. Um, yeah, I I'm going to be honest with you because, you know, who knows who's going to die, right? Who knows when you're going to die? You may die before Christmas. I may die before Christmas. Hopefully not. I mean, I don't intend to die before Christmas. I like to live until I'm 100. But, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, right? Uh, and that's why I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just going to tell you the truth. What's important in life, you know? If you know what's important in life, you could strive for it and you could achieve your happiness, right? But if you don't know what's most important in life, how are you going to achieve your happiness, right? Yeah. Uh, as I say, you could always get your college degree online or in person after you get married. That shouldn't be your priority. You know, you don't even need a college degree. I mean... What good is a college degree? You know, people get college degree just for a job, you know, mostly. Uh, or if they're wealthy, they, they, they don't need a job, then they go to college. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, college is, it serves a utilitarian purpose, you know? You shouldn't waste your life in a college. It's a stupid thing to do. You go to college if you need college to get a job, right? Or um, you know, basically, that basically that's what college is good for. Let's be honest here. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is COVID-19 America. You can die before Christmas. Don't waste your time in college if you don't have to. Um, yeah, life is too short. You know, you live 100 years. We're gonna stay like 4% of it in college. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Unless you absolutely need to, you know what I mean? And there's so many things to do. I mean, so many things that will make you happy, like getting married and having kids and then having grandkids. You know, there are a lot of things that are more meaningful in, them, more meaningful in life than, you know, like college. Yeah, I mean, I see college mostly as a waste of time. Uh, obviously, you know, some fields like nursing, medicine, law school, you know, if you want to become a lawyer, these things require college education. It's a necessary evil. But yeah, college, college is by and large a waste of time. 
majority of Americans don't go to college and they have happy life, uh, probably happier lives than people who go to college. So, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so put things into perspective. College is not everything. Um, yeah, there, there are things that are far more important than college, like your family, your love, you know, your marriage, your kids, future kids, you know, these are far more important. Keep things in perspective. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Harry's like nodding. He's like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, so, well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you joined me today. Um, today is the third, third day of Republican convention. So catch up on the highlights, you know, reruns. Um, yeah, and I guess tomorrow is the fourth day, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, so I guess I'll see you tomorrow in 24 hours. Um, yeah, have a nice, fruitful day. Uh, watch some uh, Republican National Convention stuff. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, check, check in with me. Watch my show tomorrow. It's a daily show. And I'll have new content for you uh, to entertain you, uh, to help you survive COVID-19. Uh, I will give you some important stuff and analysis, stats and analysis. Um, yeah, so I uh, look forward to tomorrow. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, and have a nice day. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.